Ah, our galaxy is a wonderful place to live, isn't it? Wait, what? You're saying not everyone likes wearing their gas masks? They wish their new planet was more like their home world. All right, fine. I guess it's time we start giving the people what they want. That's why this edition of the Interstellar Space Genesis Essential Series is dedicated to telling you all about planetary engineering. Every race in Interstellar Space Genesis has a specific type of planet they prefer. This planet type can be colonized immediately from the start of the game. While it would be ideal to be surrounded by such hospitable planets, unfortunately the galaxy is just not that accommodating. Depending on your difficulty level and your randomized galaxy composition, you may not be able to find any ideal planets nearby, and if you do, they may be guarded by a galactic space monster. Each race also has several planet types they consider tolerable. The remainder of the planets are considered hostile. While they suffer no penalty when colonizing their ideal planet type, they suffer increasingly worse penalties when colonizing tolerable or hostile ones. When colonizing a tolerable or hostile planet, you will notice your citizens are indeed wearing a gas mask. Since not many races are excited about living under such conditions, this planet incurs several penalties. These include a morale penalty, a population capacity penalty, a population growth penalty, and a maintenance penalty. One method of eliminating several of these penalties, at least in the short term, is by first researching and then building a pressurized dome. Each pressurized dome can support up to three population, and these pops no longer suffer from the morale and population growth penalties attributed to the planet's non-ideal biome. Unfortunately, the other penalties do still apply. While domes do take up a building slot, don't worry. You can remove them later and free those slots back up when you've created a more suitable living arrangement for your citizens. You may notice on some worlds that the morale of your people is slightly higher than on another. While this can be caused by a number of factors, the one relevant to today's guide is the ecological level of the planet. Planets have four ecological levels ranging from zero, minimal, to three, uplifted. The higher the level, the better their morale will be. There are several technologies in the planetary engineering tree which will provide access to improving the ecological value of your planets, as well as the speed in which these improvements are made. So, you've colonized a planet and built a dome. Your citizens are off to a good start. Now you may be wondering what you can do to help them stop surviving and start thriving. Thankfully, there are several options available to you. On the left side of your colony, you will find the planetary engineering options. Initially, only habitat control will be available to you. Habitat control provides a population growth boost whenever it is active, and using your slider to allocate some or even all of your production towards it can significantly increase the speed in which new pops appear. The planetary engineering infrastructure option, which is available for you to choose each time you level up your colony's infrastructure, provides a bonus to all planetary engineering projects. Also, each level of this branch impacts the capabilities of all your support ships empire-wide. Obtaining all three levels of planetary engineering infrastructure within a single colony will also provide an empire-wide boost. Another option is a support ship. Support ships are very large ships that sit in the orbit of a system and improve the entire system's production abilities. In addition, they also provide significant benefits to the planetary engineering efforts of each colony within the orbited system. Even if you only have access to habitat control, the support ships will provide bonus production to your efforts and increase the population growth rate of your colonies. Several space culture options can improve the speed and benefits of your planetary engineering. And finally, some leaders have access to the astrobiologist skill, which further enhances your planetary engineering research related efforts. With a whole branch of the technology tree dedicated to your planetary engineering efforts, you will have no shortage of useful options to pursue. Some technologies allow you to improve the ecology of your planets. These include enhanced ecology, advanced ecology, and the three uplift types, Tartarus, Gaia, and Chaos. Each of these upgrades brings a higher morale and population growth boost to the colony. Other research options include flat percentages designed to increase all of your efforts. Finally, we also have terraforming options. Terraforming allows you to change a planet to be exactly what you want it to be, at least when given enough time. The current ecological level of all of your colonies can be viewed in the Colony Overview panel. The number in parentheses next to the biome of the planet displays the current level. 
You can also see the current ecological level of a planet in the colony view, next to the eco-engineering symbol. When you have selected a colony you wish to improve, open the colony view and click the drop-down in the eco-engineering section. Note that this will normally already be set to habitat control. From the drop-down, select the desired ecological enhancement. If the drop-down arrow is not present, then your planet is already at the maximum level you have researched. Remember that Ecological Level 3 is the maximum for all planet types except Baron, which cannot be improved beyond zero unless you first terraform it to another planet type. You should strive to increase the ecological level of all of your planets, except if you plan to terraform them. Terraforming takes longer the higher a planet's ecological level is. Also, Ecological Level 3 planets, called Uplifted Worlds, cannot be terraformed unless you have the Master Geologist Space Culture option, so it is especially important to terraform them before increasing their ecological level. Want to turn that swamp world into a Terran world? No problem, all you need is terrestrial terraforming and to complete the project. Want to turn that lava world into a Terran world? Now that's a big project. You're going to need both terrestrial terraforming and atmospheric terraforming technologies, and a lot more production. The time it takes to terraform a planet is based on three main factors. One, the difficulty of the project. The more significant the difference between planet types, the longer the process will take. 2. The size of the planet. The larger it is, the longer it will take. And 3. The ecology of the planet. The higher it is before the terraform, the longer it will take to convert. There are also a couple key things to keep in mind with terraforming. The terraformed planet always starts with a minimum ecological level of zero, regardless of what it was before being terraformed. Also, while barren planets can be terraformed, their ecological level can never be increased. You now have all the tools you need to turn the planets of the galaxy into ideal worlds for your people to live on. I'm sure no one will come along to disturb you in your efforts. But, just in case they do, you may want to sign up for our combat course as well. Oh, are you still here? Alright, I suppose I can share one more bonus terraforming tip. When playing as the Moltar, or a custom race that selects the World Shaper's ability, you will have a very powerful terraforming tool in your possession. The World Shaper's ability allows you to complete any planetary engineering project instantaneously, including terraforming. When used properly, this ability will allow you to potentially skip dozens of turns you would have normally spent terraforming. Be careful though, this ability can only be used once every 50 turns, so make sure every use of it really counts.